like I'm eating a buy some of the. So it's sustainably sourced as well. The lady gave me a whole spiel about it. So you, it, it has directions of like what you're supposed to do. And so and I knew that you like to burn sage. So. I love like rituals. Yeah, and stuff. so I got that. I saw and that in all of you. So you'll like this one first mm-hmm. and then you'll like that one afterwards. And it's sustainably sourced from so a, yeah, from a, a tribe in I Wisconsin. Love it. A tribe. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh my god, I love tribes and I love Wisconsin. <laughs> Hi everybody, our expert painted lady and history and weapon guru Shia Sword Girl have teamed up again. I'm Shia Sword Girl and I'm painted lady and today we are talking the freakiest art in history. <laughs> history is like Hugh Jackman. You either love it or you hate it. I hate that asshole. Prepare to be wildly entertained because this isn't like any regular old history class. Today we are getting downright freak. <laughs> First off is Gustav Klimt, who used cat urine as a fixative. The kiss is undoubtedly one of the most iconic works of the 20th century and a painting in which everyone is familiar. At the very least, you've definitely seen it on greeting cards before. What fewer people know, however, are the stories about the painter Gustav Klimt. Two words, cat Shia. I'm sorry. <laughs> His studio was ruled by cats. She's not lying. He believed that cat urine was the best fixative available, so the pages of his sketchbook were coated in urine. They may have smelled like cat piss, but even worse, at the end of his years, he ended up burning them and destroying millions of precious content. Would you ever drink cat urine? Who's asking? Sandy Skoglund once filled an entire room with raw bacon. I mean, sometimes life could just be a lot, and you just want to cover everything in your house in raw bacon. Why are you looking at me like that? I was just thinking. No! Chai Gu Chung creates art with fireworks, so he could talk to aliens. Chai Gu Chung sets off explosions with gunpowder, fireworks, and sometimes just draws with fire. How does one draw with fire? Why the pyrotechnics? He's trying to communicate with extraterrestrials, of course. We want to be like accurate here. Let's yeah, see. Lear- <laughs> learning channel. God <laughs> man, we're here to f-ing educate. Salvador Dali, the lobster telephone, in 1936. The Surrealist movement in the 1920s and 30s believed that revolutions begin in dreams. Dali's lobster telephone is a Surrealist object, a ready-made thing or a combination of things that speaks in some obsessive, inexplicable way to the artist. For Dali, telephones are sinister messengers from beyond, while the lobster is sexual. With a lobster telephone, you can dial up a dream. I'm gonna have to process this one. What do you think of this art piece? I want my house full of like wacky things, so if lobster phone, I'll put a lobster phone in my house. You call people. Surrealist art is like, it, it tries to be unsettling in a way, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you like that? Mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> I like anything that challenges you to kind of like think out of the box. Surrealist art does exactly that. If you want to think more in my box, go over to my onlyfans.com slash Shia Sword Girl. I'm Shia Sword Girl. I'm Painted Lady. Don't forget to take it one stroke at a time. And don't be a, a bitch. bitch.